This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Dean Perrine, and on behalf of our team here at JSA, welcome to our monthly virtual CEO roundtable. These monthly broadcasts lead us up to our on-site CEO roundtables at our executive networking event, the Telecom Exchange, or TEX. And new for 2019, we are now quarterly. Next up, uh, we are back in Hoboken for our ninth annual Tex New York, May 14th through the 15th. And then Toronto in October and then LA in November. More info on that at thetelecomexchange.com. Calm. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, we've got a fun one today. Uh, the, today's topic, blockchain and AI, the next gen battleground for cybersecurity. It's gonna be interesting. Um, we have a, a C-level lineup from three very innovative companies and three very, very uh, intelligent guys. We've had a, a great conversation leading right up to this round table, so you're in for a treat. Joining us today and to help us introduce those panelists and moderate our panel, please welcome Mr. Jerry Christensen. Jerry is the founder and CEO of our industry's leading market intelligence and technology insights firm, Mind Commerce. Jerry, uh, the floor is all yours. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you very much. So first of all, I'd like to have each of the panelists introduce themselves and give a little bit of background. Dominic Style, I'll turn it over to you first. All right, great. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, so my name is Dominic Style. I'm the CTO and founder of Dabs Inc. We are an enterprise blockchain computing company uh, focused on deliver delivering smart contracts and other enterprise applications to the salesforce.com ecosystem. Uh, we focus primarily on uh, building application on the Ethereum, Hyperledger, and Corda protocols around accelerating site, uh, six sales cycles for uh, enterprise customers. Thank you, Dominic. Okay. Next, I'd like to introduce Mayunde Walker. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, how are you doing? Um, my name is Mayunde Walker. I'm the CEO of Open Crypto Trust. Uh, Open Crypto Trust is a blockchain-based company that focuses on the telecommunications industry. Um, and we've built some killer apps that solve specific problems within the telco space, um, such as false or impractical bandwidth market valuation and significant delays in provisioning, as well as some very cool security and encryption services. Uh, very nice to be here. Great, thank you. And next I'd like to have Guy Roosevelt introduce himself. Guy? Hi, I'm Guy Roosevelt. I'm the Director of Threat Intelligence and Web Security for NS Focus. NS Focus is one of the largest pure security companies you've not heard of. Um, we're very big in terms of developing network and infrastructure security products as well as threat intelligence. Fantastic. Well, let's jump right in. We've got a few interesting questions for you. Mayunde, let's start off with you. So the first question is, what are some of the problems that blockchain solves today that artificial intelligence does not solve and also vice versa? So it's, it's an interesting point. And um, I, I come to this with the advantage of having uh, as a partner, a well-known artificial intelligence company. Um, and, you know, my sense is this. Uh, I would actually rephrase the question a little bit because, you know, what it is that blockchain offers in particular is a, a framework of trust through which how, you know, through which various kinds of transactions can take place. Um, and with artificial intelligence, you know, you have a, an opportunity to um, gather, uh, you know, uh, different pieces of information and in a very, um, uh, exciting and innovative way uh, leverage artificial intelligence in order to find solutions and answers to problems that one wouldn't you know, readily be able to find. So, you know, I don't see them as necessarily being uh, solutions that, um, you know, solve uh, uh, problems better than the other. Um, I actually find uh, and you know have the working experience uh, to show that they really complement each other and, and do it in very different ways. I, I don't think one uh, solves uh, um, solutions much better than the other. In fact, I think they're both necessary but different solutions entirely. I can give you more details if you're curious, but that's my sense. Guy, what are your thoughts on that? And, and also a related question is, how do you see blockchain and AI working together in the future to solve cybersecurity challenges? 
Well, the interesting thing about blockchain is it, it's geared for a, a certain type of activity, which is good um, because it's transaction based. I can improve the ability to identify and authenticate things in supply chain type stuff. I can use it as better inventory control. You know, there's tens of thousands of, of devices that many organizations have that they have to keep track of in terms of IoT, in, in terms of uh, 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 industrial control systems and by being able to use blockchain technology they can better identify fingerprint their technologies which is great um, at the same time we have to be aware that there's a lot of operational things that still have to be worked out to ensure that people don't take advantage of flaws that are in that ecosystem I, agree. I, I, have, I have one more point to add there on on the combination of the two I think there's there's two applications I've, I've seen one of them on the security side is we're entering the world where AI can do things like deep fakes or even text generation we saw with like GPT-2 and you have like these uh, you know we're moving towards that where you're gonna have all these kind of you have you know fake generated content that's like completely uh, looks completely real having a kind of providence or a lineage or a chain where a company can say whether it's an executive or it's a company saying this is our providence this is our actual content that was produced from us whether it's an article whether it's a video of someone saying something i think that application uh, will continue to come up more and more as just that that lineage uh, on, on the secondary side the actual models themselves that are being used in ai having lineage where what was the training data used for this particular model can we have provenance of where that data came from off a blockchain based system of record um, and so i think those are two applications one on the security side one more on the uh, provenance side which i think are, are pretty exciting thank you and, and for you listeners that was dominic style speaking just then so actually a, a related portion of that original question for you dominic do you see anything in particular about how blockchain relates to devices as opposed to networks as opposed to data are there any particular concerns or application areas that you see that are unique to any of those three different things on on the device side uh i've been hearing more and more around you know you have to have a trusted uh identification so you need to know who sent what data like a, they call it a did or a decentralized identifier um and that ultimately comes down to being able to trust the device and having finality uh, most of the blockchain systems today will be, you know, 10 minute block time or, uh, or 10 minute block time for confirmation or even 15 seconds. I think that's just too long for a lot of the systems that we're expecting will go like live on these types of networks. Moving towards consensus algorithms where you have immediate finality, that will be where we start to see like real devices using these types of blockchain networks. And there's a ton of new consensus algorithms such as Tenet that are actually pioneering this that very thing. Okay. Now, see, that's just so you say that because that's where you start seeing the ecosystem start to have issues and vulnerabilities, especially with consensus based algorithms and devices. Uh, for example, there's what's called the 51% problem. The thing about blockchain is it's a consensus based algorithm, which means that everybody has to be able to buy into this and prove who they are and, and agree on the on the transactions, which makes it very difficult to falsify or 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 modify a transaction. But the minute you get someone that can control over 51% of the environment, they then have the primary voting capability to be able to vote into fraudulent transactions or to be able to roll back stuff and that becomes an issue. So when you talk about devices, um, you know, this malware will be coming out, they'll be able to start taking advantage of this. Are they gonna be able to start using artificial intelligence and malware to be able to say, if I can control a blockchain network, how can I then go ahead and manipulate the transactions? And that's the stuff we have to start worrying about. Thank you, Guy. So Guy, a follow-up question to that. Is there anything in particular about blockchain or AI for that matter that you see as particularly important for supporting the internet of things? And that could be either an IoT network or an IoT device or, or the data. Well, one of the nice things about blockchain is I can use it, in the, as I said, in the supply chain. And where it's really important is I can use it to identify where uh, things like software updates come from. One of the biggest problems we have right now with a lot of malware and a lot of phishing type stuff is a lot of devices get spoofed in terms of where they get their, their software updates from, which then allows them to get affected by malware. Uh, in the blockchain supply process, it allows us to uniquely identify where the software is coming from, and then when the transaction happens, I can verify that the proper software has been uploaded to the proper device. So there's a lot of things at that point in terms of how blockchain can improve the IoT infrastructure. 
again. But then the other side of the coin is, if I have the ability to get that malware in there, how can I how can I um, circumvent or or um, uh, basically infest that place with something bad? From our official yeah. intelligence, sorry, from our artificial intelligence point of view, the smarter the malware is, and they're going to start using more artificial intelligence type algorithms to be able to emulate and be able to adapt in real time to a lot of these types of conditions to be able to try to to uh, hit the blockchain systems. Sorry. Thank you, Guy. Mayan, did you have some comments on that? Well, no, just uh, when we talk about uh, the usage of blockchain and Internet of Things, uh, one of our um, uh, development team uh, teams in Spain, in fact, uh, developed a framework specifically to prevent um, uh, something that's plagued uh, uh, internets for some time, which is uh, BGP spoofing. I'm sure, Guy, you're aware of uh, some of the recent events, in fact, that took down um, some very well-known companies uh, because of BGP spoofing, either <laughs> accidentally or, or not. Uh, but by using um, blockchain in such a way that uh, the nodes on the network uh, can be verified before they begin advertising BGP routes uh, is a phenomenal uh, approach and one that I'm, I'm, I'm very certain we're going to see a lot greater adoption of. Fantastic. So, Mayande, while well, we've got your attention, I've got another question for you. Regarding lessons learned from the use of blockchain and cryptocurrencies, how do you see business practices and procedures evolving over time in other industries? So, um, as a, a blockchain-based company that's focused on telecommunications, uh, Open Crypto Trust um, has had a lot of uh, opportunity to think very carefully uh, about how to approach this. And I think Part of that, the answer to that question lies in whether or not uh, one chooses to approach a, uh, a public or a private blockchain. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, uh, first of all, I think it should be well understood by most people uh, that there will be multiple blockchains. There isn't going to be a winner takes all. Um, and certainly in the area, as Guy was mentioning, of logistics, you know, private blockchains make a lot of sense in terms of uh, a way to simply uh, track um, uh, data or track transactions between different entities that are continuously uh, in partnership. Uh, but public blockchains um, really necessitate the use of a new way of doing business. Um, it's something that for people that are very uh, comfortable with Bitcoin, it's well established. Uh, but the idea of you know tokenization uh, and the idea of having tokens that are representative of some uh, piece of uh, the ecosystem that gets developed within a public blockchain uh, really is a new way of doing business. In some ways, it's not entirely new. Um, you know, certainly we are all very used to going to, I don't know, fairs where you get tickets uh, to represent the different rides that you take, or if you're a little older and, and have certain uh, outlook on life, perhaps you go to casinos where you get chips uh, in order to play some of the games. Um, so it's not entirely new, uh, but I think what may be lost in certain industry analysts is understanding really the power behind tokenomics and how they play uh, a really uh, incredible role in the ecosystem that involves a public blockchain. And, and there's a lot that can be uh, talked about that has been learned from even Bitcoin and we were talking earlier about the sort of unfairness of certain consensus algorithms like proof of work. And certainly there's a, a lot more impetus for leveraging technologies that uh, provides a much more democratic approach. And, and we ourselves came up with our own consensus algorithm called proof of duration that you know, really speaks to some of the lessons learned from uh, Bitcoin and, and the unfair advantages towards those that have uh, huge uh, uh, compute ability as well as very you know access to very cheap energy, which is not you know necessarily the, the value that we get from a decentralized platform like you know uh, a blockchain black uh, platform is supposed to support a public blockchain. Thank you, Mayande. So Dominic, I see you shaking your head uh, quite a bit in the affirmative. Would you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I think you know. Um, the part from digitally native assets and tokens, I think, is one massive component was the first wave of and is, is going to continue to secure uh, whether private or public networks. I think there will be tokens on, deployed on both. I think 
you know, that will lead fractionalized ownerships um, and, and a number of other applications, whether in uh, B2B or B2C scenarios. I think one of the focus that we've made is also on digitally native contracts. And um, that's something in the uh, ecosystem that we're in. And we've talked to different uh, enterprise customers is they just spend so much time reconciling contracts between each other, whether paper processes. And this is this is in every industry, oil and gas industry, financial services industry, um, transport logistics. There's just so many contracts that are going back and forth. And all of these companies are in different either cloud or on-premise contract based systems. And so our focus over the last two years is we've identified that being able to create auto executing digital digitally native contracts is um, going to provide not only top line growth, but ultimately remove the costs associated with this reconciliation between these different companies and in a value chain. And when it, I think that's that horizontal application that we discovered um, you know, over talking to these different customers is where we've really, really focused our time and being able to automate things like payments, things like escrow within these agreements between the different counterparties. I, I, I'm, that's what I'm really, really excited about uh, when it comes to some of the industry. Brilliant. Dominic, you're so right, and forgive me for jumping in here, but um, you know, one of the most uh, sexy aspects, quite honestly, of blockchain uh, and what's come about uh, in recent time is you know, smart contracts. And yep. really, you know, having the ability to build in code uh, the legal ramifications around, you know, what aspects of an agreement uh, necessitate the execution of a brand new contract um, and yep. having it automated is just fundamentally game changing in terms of the relationship that it or in terms of the processes that normally take place within a B2B environment. Um, yep. And uh, uh, that's a, a really uh, an exciting area and something that uh, is going to change every industry, in fact. Um, no question about it. The efficiencies right, that so come with that. All right, so a follow-up question, and thank you, Mayunde. I'm um, going to turn this next question over to Guy just to get him ready for it, but I'd like each of you to weigh in on it. So the follow-up question pertains to business models, and we've all seen sort of the hype around blockchain. And uh, mm -hmm. like any uh, new technology, there's going to be a hype cycle, of course, and I don't mean to pick on them, but I'll, I'll pick on Overstock, for example. When they announced that they were going to be a blockchain company, all of a sudden their stock price shot up. And I don't follow them very closely, but I think it came back down to earth. So the, the question is regarding uh, business models. Do you see the more generic blockchain as a service type model being more important? Or do you see more important to companies integrating blockchain in their operations to improve their bottom line. And, and it's probably not an either or, I realize that, but I'd, I'd love to have you weigh in on that guy. Um, like, like I said, it's not an either or kind of thing, is you'll see companies doing both from a logistics supply chain, things I mentioned before, you know, how can I stop the proliferation of counterfeit goods? So if I can use blockchain to be able to do transaction process, to be identify what are the products I'm presenting, what are the products I'm selling, what are the products I'm receiving, to be able to validate that those are all real and authentic and not been uh, uh, either stolen or counterfeit, that's a huge thing. At the same time, because of the infrastructure required to do some of this type of, of supply chain type stuff, it can be very expensive or, 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 or very resource intensive, and a lot of smaller SMB types would like to take advantage of it. So seeing blockchain as a service type of thing I see is, is has a lot of a lot of potential in the future, as long as it's implemented securely. Okay, Dominic, would you like to weigh in on that as well? Yeah, so I think, you know, there's a lot of blockchain platform as a service companies. Uh, you know, that was one of our first products. We, we released that, you know, sort of, okay, you can spin up some blockchain nodes. I think the, the, the point where it comes to is you still need to have, you need, still need to go up the stack and you still need to identify like, what is the actual application once we have these nodes running? I think originally that was kind of our first thing. So let's let's abstract away all the infrastructure, uh, you know, create whatever middlewares we need to, to you know, provide an interface. But I, I think ultimately you need to get to where it's going to be blockchain applications as a service. Um, and that's where you'll start to unlock all the value. I think running nodes, um, you know, run, running nodes at the platform level is, is, a, is a great step. Um, but you, you ultimately need to have that, that secondary interface layer as well. Um, and, and from a, from a business model standpoint, I think, you know, there's ways to charge for that, you know, from a, you you can charge for the nodes per month or you can meter it on, you know, cloud platforms. Uh, uh, you know, I think 
aside from that, there's a lot of models where you can do the open source model and you have a native token without having to go through, you know, the platform as a service model. Um, and you know, there's, everything's becoming containers. Most of these networks permission networks are running in containers. You could do, you know, an open source container, have that deployed, you know, wherever really. Um, and if it has a native token, you have this kind of, uh, you know, this co contribution in the open source community combined with that incentive co to contribute towards the project. I think that there's a lot of interesting models there that weren't really possible before that combination of, uh, you know, a tokenized asset in an open project um, for, for these specific type blockchain networks. Thank you, Dominic. Mayende, what do you think? Yeah, so, you know, um, with every new technology, there is definitely uh, a moment of hype. And um, I'm here to say, uh, as someone who really um, was a big critic and a skeptic, um, and it took me many years to turn around to re really understand the value of a decentralized network and uh, blockchain in itself, and even of you know uh, uh, tokenomics. Um, you know, here's what I think is actually going to happen. And and by the way, my favorite example is not Overstock as much as it is the uh, uh, Long Island Ice Tea Company that you know changed their name to a Blockchain Ice Tea, and their stock went crazy. <laughs> um, but listen, you know, blockchain is not, you know, uh, in and of itself uh, a solution. And there's a lot of uh, industry analysts that are quick to say, hey, look, you know, if your solution doesn't really need blockchain, if it's just simply a database, then, you know, what's the purpose? Um, key to the transformative nature of the sort of framework of trust that blockchain provides is really understanding exactly how it will impact a specific industry and how it can be leveraged in a smart way. And that's what we sought to do uh, in the telecommunications industry in terms of um, taking the technology and, you know, for us, it was really kind of uh, serendipitous. Uh, we weren't looking to build a blockchain company. Blockchain actually solved a problem that we were trying to, you know, helped us to solve a problem we were trying to solve. Um, and I think that what we'll find in every industry is that um, very smart folks, and I, I tend to want to believe like myself, uh, innovators uh, will come up with solutions that simply um, are game changing or simply transformative enough that, you know, the industry in itself will have to stop and take a look and recognize this value. Um, nobody, you know, especially well-established industries are necessarily looking to change. There are definitely, you know, lots of, you know, uh, C-level folks that are recognizing the, the importance of blockchain. Uh, but, you know, blockchain in and of itself is not, uh, doesn't solve problems. Um, it really requires, as Dominic was saying, taking a look higher in the stack of uh, understanding of, you know, what you're looking to solve and whether or not there's a place for it. Um, I happen to believe that there is a place for it in just about every industry, uh, but it's gonna take very smart people to find the way to build that ecosystem that provides value and causes the industry to be willing to change. Um, and that's, that's what I think we're gonna see. Blockchain as a service, yes. In fact, there are many companies that are doing uh, that kind of model, but I think that there will be innovators within each industry that will really kind of change the game and people will you know uh adopt it and it will not be anything that um it'll just become ubiquitous in terms of how everyone uh, uh realizes its value thank you mayande so for our last question and we're going to need to wind down here we've got about five minutes left i'd like to bring things back to telecom networks something that's very near and dear to my heart for my career and what mine commerce covers the information and communications technology industry and so with this last question, it seems like we spent a lot of time on blockchain. I've just made some mental notes. I'd like, if, if you guys can, with your answer, to spend a little more time on artificial intelligence in terms of how it may support blockchain. And just to sort of tee this up for you, one of the things in telecom networks that we focus on a lot is AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting. And so I've got sort of this mental model in which I think that blockchain helps with authentication. We can verify who you are through through the chain of custody, so to speak. But then I think of artificial intelligence as being the um, authorization part. So as Guy was mentioning earlier, uh, alluding to that, what are the behaviors? And so one of the companies that we followed for quite a while is Silence, who was 
uh, recently acquired by BlackBerry. And I thought that was particularly interesting because BlackBerry focuses on Internet of Things, IoT that we talked about earlier. And so I know that Silence focuses on AI based security. So, so Dominic, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. And the question for you is, how do you see AI complementing blockchain in support of telecom networks in general? And if, specifically, if you want to address that towards IoT or edge computing or anything else in a telecom network, I, I'd love to hear that from you. So I, I think that one of the things we're moving towards is, uh, is, is privacy, is more privacy when it comes to network. And I think there's like a lot of applications around differential privacy uh, that are kind of being uh, implemented on these blockchain networks. And, you know, they're doing things like we can have a machine learning on this particular data set, but obfuscating any of the personal identification information from that particular, uh, you know, uh, training data that is being done in, in some blockchain companies or blockchain platforms where they're making that privacy fo uh, first, uh, excuse me, privacy focused uh, leap. And I think that that combination of being able to do privacy preserving data analytics on a, you know, on a network, or even I know Uber was pioneering something like this for, you know, uh, their network of drivers. As soon as you get out of the Uber, we want to obfuscate, you know, where's the next place they're going. Uh, before, before they were kind of capturing that data. So, uh, you know, I think that application of, of being able to do machine learning and, and AI on, on a particular data set, but using blockchain based or advanced cryptography based uh, systems to uh, preserve the privacy of the data training. I think that's, a, you know, something that's pretty interesting for me when it comes to networks. Got it. Thank you, Dominic. Guy, what's your answer in two minutes or less? I'd like to see blockchain and AI being used together from the basis of being transactional auditing. If I can use AI to look at the transactions that are happening on the blockchain to be able to identify what could be potentially anomalous uh, transactions, again, to identify potential incursions in the system, um, to make sure that bad things would happen, make sure that rollback transactions aren't happening, I, I think AI would be great for doing that to be able to improve the security uh, identification of activity. Great, thank you, Guy. Monday. So quickly, two examples come to mind. Um, so artificial intelligence within the telco space is critical in terms of doing what you know Guy and what Dominic were suggesting in terms of being able to take predictive measures of uh, analysis of traffic to understand where there may be security holes. That's something that we are leveraging, in fact. Um, and then one other interesting tidbit is that. Uh, one of our solutions, blockchain as a transport, is being leveraged by an artificial intelligence company simply because they are taking tons of very sensitive data and uh, in their cloud, you know, doing their AI magic uh, and making it available for uh, much smaller companies. This is a, an interesting company called Agdor AI. Uh, but they, here's an example of how blockchain and artificial intelligence are uh, working together in order to provide a, a better solution for uh a smaller business. So that's, uh, that's what comes to mind. Fantastic. So one more question in that same area, and we've got a couple minutes here. Edge computing is something that everybody's talking about these days. It's something that is used for LTE, and it's going to be particularly important for 5G. Part of the notion of edge computing is that there's going to be virtualization, and there's going to be the ability for application providers to update a edge computing node on the fly. So it seems like that is an area that's ripe for blockchain. Guy, what are your thoughts on that? As I said before, the ability to be able to uniquely identify all the edge computing devices would be a very big thing because, again, you would want to make sure that no one tries to insert a malicious edge device in there that's going to either capture or modify traffic. Uh, you want to make sure it doesn't do anything to change or steal any of the information that we see happening on there. Um, again, I think blockchain would be really good in being able to secure these types of systems from certain kinds of malicious attacks. Fantastic. Dominic, one final note on that? I think uh, when it comes to being able to have uh, more of a distributed point, you know, distributed points of presence, whether the node's running in a container or if it, you know, if it's a, a you know, a, a public network, I think that having kind of this shift towards edge computing will be able to bring the, uh, you know, the network closer to people's end devices and that ultimately will give them, you know, a better experience more and, and be able to actually have, uh, you know, real app, real applications of these types of blockchain networks in, in the future. Outside Thank of, you, uh, outside. 
Thank you very much. And thanks to all of you. It's been a real pleasure to moderate this session. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Dean. You got it. You got it. Um, and thank you. Uh, thank you, panelists. Thank you, Jerry, for your views on blockchain and AI, the next gen battleground for cybersecurity. Again, all of our panelists, Dominic Style, Adapts, My, uh, Mayande Walker, OpenCT, and Guy Rosefeld at N Focus. And a huge thank you to you once again, uh, Jerry Christensen, uh, founder of Mind Commerce. Um, for keeping us all together today. Guys, I feel like um, we needed an entire afternoon for this, uh, sure. but uh, a lot of great information here in just uh, 30 short minutes. And also thank you viewers for tuning in. And if you like today's content, you can come hear our CEO roundtables live again at Te Telecom Exchange now quarterly. Um, next up is our flagship event, May 14th and 15th at the W Hoboken. Uh, we have an amazing lineup of speakers already confirmed for that event. Uh, with just a few speaking slots and sponsorships remaining for that uh, for that event as well. So check out more at thetelecomexchange.com. To feature your thought leader here next time on our monthly virtual CEO roundtables, just email us at pr at jsa.net. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to JSA TV. Um, until next time, happy networking.